At this stage, we have initialized a run and we have our run object uh, available for us to start logging all this metadata. Um, like as the first step, I want to go ahead and, and track all uh, the S3 sources I've uh, specified above. So I've created a data train namespace, data valid namespace, and like other namespaces as well. I can invoke the track files function and specify the S3 source. And essentially what it would do at this point is it would go ahead uh, and create a file specific and a global hash for all the contents in that S3 storage. And that global hash will essentially be an identifier if um, if a cross runs that source has changed. Data which is stored at that path has been tracked for any changes. And the way it is being tracked is uh, you end up calculating hashes on the metadata of each of the files. And you also calculate a global hash for all the files in that um, source. And that way you can keep a track of say any uh, changes. So essentially a different hash would mean that, okay, things have changed. Let me quickly try to open project quickly and, and like have a look at uh, one of the S3. Uh, so, so how would that uh, S3 tracking look like um, as we as we as we look into the UI? So, I mean, here we have an overview of, of a single run, um, and and some of the namespaces say were created for us, and the others we explicitly created. So uh, if you remember, we looked at the data uh, namespace, which we uh, created for each of the splits, where we are keeping a track of all these versions. And if we uh, quickly hop into this namespace, we see that we have, a, um, say, a split for, for each of these sources. And, and, and here we can also see what, what the hash is for that specific version. Uh, we can also see, uh, say, like hashes and metadata at a file level. So the uh, structure of the train S3 was we had an X CSV and a Y uh, CSV. You could essentially also have a folder of images and like other sources, and it'll be tracked for each file as well. Uh, in addition, you also have an option where you can uh, simply go to all the runs uh, which have used this version of data so uh like essentially i can go and see all the runs which have been executed on that version of data and and further say um like analyze all these runs on say a specific metric and other dimensions of it i'll again uh, get into it as like as we move forward so one of the things I actually wanted to show with the S3 tracking or like or the version tracking which we have is you can group all these runs say on on specific versions so I mean here here I like I have um, all the runs with, which have been say trained on this um, a version of uh, data so essentially I can go ahead and select these runs and for example if I select one run from this version and another one from the other version uh, i can like i like i have a flexibility of seeing what the differences across these versions are so uh, i can essentially go and see that okay these versions aren't the same uh, like i can see that uh, this version is being used by 12 runs this version has used uh, uh, 10 runs and uh, i can also see what has changed for, for each file in that source. Uh, so uh, here I can see that this these files were already present in both the uh, versions. How like however these files have say like have been updated across these versions. Uh, this is indicated by this yellow highlight. The red highlight would indicate that this file has been removed in in the right version of of the comparison. 
a green highlight would indicate that this file was added like into the version. And you can also see what were the main changes in the metadata uh, if, if, if you would like that. And we'll receive this information uh, for all the splits and, and we can do it say across say multiple runs or any uh, runs of uh, our interest. The way this implementation works, and and uh, uh, um, if I like understand your question uh, correctly, so the way this implementation works is is uh, basically file version ag agnostic, and also the folder structure agnostic. So as long as um, so it, it it essentially looks for changes as so you could essentially put any structure or any amount of the files in there and should be able to track the changes across it. When it comes to, say, keeping a track of uh, data frames, we only operate at a metadata le level. So if you are uh, looking for something which tracks changes in the rows, that uh, is not currently possible with the implementation.